Hello everyone. This is Laura Lee Collet from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And I just wanted you to see my cute mask. It has Stampin' Up! on it. And um, I guess if we are ever able to get out of our house and do classes and such, I'll have this to wear. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, things have been kind of crazy in my life as usual, but we're doing well here. And uh, I'm glad I have a little clock on my uh, table here because my computer says that it's five o'clock p.m., which I think means that I'm in London or if it's a.m., I might be in Sydney. Both of those places sound awesome to me. But I'm here in Baton Rouge. So, today we're going to talk about uh, a precious card that I made for my husband. And we're going to be using the Darling Donkey set, which is backwards. So, let me tilt you down so that you can see what's... And let me get all of this right. Okay. Now, let me see if you could see the stamp set. Okay. This stamp set is one of the cutest ones I think they have put out. It is a celebration set which at this time of the year, January through February, any $50 order qualifies for a set out of the Celebration catalog. Well, I hadn't used any of my Celebration sets, and my husband's birthday was coming up, so this is what I came up with for him. Is that the cutest thing you've ever seen? I love it. And, of course, his remark to me was, so you think I'm an ass? Well, maybe sometimes, but most of the time, no. But isn't this cute? I used, besides the Darling Donkey set, I also used some paper out of the Celebration catalog, and it's called oh so ombre and i guess if you know anything about ombre you know that it either goes light to dark or dark to light whichever way you are looking so um, it comes in let me show you what i've done here i have my new stamp and storage items and i have been uh, putting my uh, DSP in there, my designer series paper. I put a little thin sheet of uh, transparency with the description and the colors that it uses. And then I put that it's uh, 2021 Oso oh Ombre. I put the name of it there. So you can see that it's Bermuda Bay, Blackberry Bliss. Something has happened with, okay. Blackberry Bliss, Granny Apple Green, Rococo Rose, and Whisper White. Well, for some reason on my, I can't get my screen on my computer to go big. So if you're making any comments that I'm not commenting about, it's because I can't see it. I'll, I'll get with you later. Anyway, sometimes when I'm stuck and I know I'm going to use, uh, a designer series paper. I'll use these colors and that's what I did for this card. And let me show you what, what these look like. They're more or less solid on a few of the pages and then you get into the little circles. So I combined and used two of these. I cut the paper four by four for the dots, and one and a half by four for the bottom. And this kind of blends in, so you don't really see it a lot. I could have cho chosen 
a um, lighter part of it that would have shown up better, but I like the way it turned out. So, let me show you what all we're going to be using for this. I am using two different dies. Um, I'm using the Autumn Wheelbarrow, and there's a fence in here that I have on my little magnetic board so I don't lose this piece. But anyway, if you look at the... Um, the fence, it's got a wood grain embossing in it. And then I used for the little uh, hat. I couldn't find a birthday hat, so I went with my triangles. This is a set of stitch triangles. They're 19 different dies. And I have forgotten the names of all of these. So uh, I know this is a right angle. I've forgotten all that. But anyway, I used the little tiny, little bitty one right there. And y'all, I can't emphasize enough. When you're using these little tiny dies or stamps, have you either a magnetic sheet or a um, plexiglass thing that you can stick your uh, stamps to? Because they can get away from you like that. So... Now, let me show you what colors I went with on this. Get everything out of the way. All right, I've already talked to you about the DSP. We're starting off with a piece of Bermuda Bay that is four and a quarter by 11. So this is what we call hot dog style. I have a piece that you could get much smaller than this, but this is a scrap, um, probably about two inches by five for your fence. And I've already told you about the DSP. This is four by four and one and a half by four. All of my directions are in my gallery. Uh, they're stored and you can access these are my stamps, and if you go to my website, Stampin' at the Bird Nest, you'll see gallery there, and all the instructions and supplies for all of my cards are there. Okay, you're going to need a 2 by 3 piece for your donkey, and then just scraps of the other colors. The Granny Apple Green, the Rococo Rose, the Blackberry Bliss, and then copper, gold, silver, whatever you have for that, for the little hat. Okay, so let's get started. Get everything out of the way. First thing I'm gonna do is score my card and fold it. As you notice, I folded it backwards. It seems to do much better that way. And I'm going to go ahead and put down, and here my, that isn't the page I wanted. Where did it go? Here it is. I'm going to adhere my different, well, okay, here we go. Now, I want to tell you a couple of things about the um, stamp and seal. Every now and then, it's not putting out the sticky. You need to take your finger and roll it until it's sticky. And if it's still not working, take a look at where the tape is going over the roller. I had one that wasn't working the other day, and it was all the way to the side and off. So I had to... to drag it back up so that it goes across the roller. Another thing that can interfere with it is if you've used it a lot, you'll get some, I call them glue boogers up here, that you've got to clean out or it will trap your uh, tape and keep it from running. So those are just a couple of little things. 
and back to our card. Oops, I'm about to do the wrong side. There we go. Now, I'm going to put this color down first. In fact, let's turn it around so it is a little bit lighter and it'll show up better. Next, I'm going to put my dotted piece. And you can turn it any way you want. I kind of like it like that. And I'm going to go from the top down so that it overlaps slightly. Y'all, I'm so happy I have new contacts on and I don't have my glasses on with them. Okay, now we're going to um, look at, I'm going to go ahead and do my cutting with my um, embossing machine. I'm going to raise this up so you can see me a little bit better. And I'm going to do, there, I've only got two things to cut out, so I'm going to do them both at the same time. You're making your sandwich with plates one, two, three. Then I'm going to take my Bermuda Bay with my fence, and I want to try to get it in a strategic location so that I, I can use the rest of the scrap. Don't just put it in the middle because then you lose some. The other thing I'm going to do is cut out, and you can see I've already used this. I'm gonna cut out the birthday hat. Top it with plate three. And there you go. Can you see that my plates are staggered? I mentioned this last week, and it really does help getting things through. Sometimes it's just too thick, and it needs to be a little bit thinner to slide through the roll. Okay. So now we have our fence. And if you can see, it's got some little um, marks there that show the wood grain. And we have... Our little hat and I've already misplaced the little tiny triangle that I'll find when I get through but that's how easy they can get away from you now I'm gonna go ahead and do all my stamping and ink work first I'm gonna use early espresso let me see if I can make the screen bigger now yep I don't know what's going on. Okay, I'm using Early Espresso, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp my greeting. And what it's going to say is, hee haw, hee haw, it's your birthday. So I'm going to put the it's your birthday in the middle, close to the bottom. I want to make sure I'm not getting any halo around my stamp. Hee-haw, hee-haw. Now I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to stamp my little donkey. There are three different donkeys. One of them's kicking up his heels. This one has a rose. And the other one just has a sweet little smile while he's sitting down. So I'm out using uh, the Early Espresso for the outline of the donkey. And while I've got my ink open, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what to do with your fence. Now this will really make it pop and stand out if you'll just take a sponge dauber and lightly go over your fence post. And then it's gonna stand out and you'll be able to see that better. And you don't have to put a lot of ink, but just a little bit to 
show, you know, show those little marks there. Now, this is going to be four inches, and the uh, posts are a little bit longer. So I'm going to take my little paper snips. If you don't have any paper snips, these are great. And we got this from on stage. Isn't that a cute little scissor charm? I'm just going to snip off those ends. I'm going to set that aside. Okay, let's, let's um, move on and color our darling donkey. What I'm gonna use, I'm using gray, and I am not the best watercolor, but I'm starting with the light one, and it does fine with this uh, brown, that it's not a permanent color. Let's get his other ear there, a little bit of his hair. That's not really gonna show because he's going to be wearing the hat. Then around here, his little legs. And I'm just using little circles to fill in. And his tail. Now I'm going to take the gray granite dark and just, and I'm going to use the skinny end on this. I'm just going to go over a little bit and on his ears, just going to do some little light circles just to show a little shadow around, do that little zigzag on his hiney, and then I'm going to do his hoofs. Hooves, 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 whatever hooves. Oh, golly. Okay. So, he's finished. Get that one little spot. Now, I'm going to use the Blackberry Bliss, which is one of the colors we're using, for the little flower. And Granny Apple Green for the leaf and the stem. He's got a little bit coming out there and a little bit on the other side of his mouth. Now, before I forget it, I forgot it on my practice one. I'm taking the little hat triangle with a glue dot, or you can use liquid glue. And I'm going to put that right on his head. And I'm also using the Detail Trio Corner Rounder. It has, let me show you how pretty this is. It has little stops at each place so that you know how far to push your paper in. The one we're gonna be using is just the Corner Rounder. It also makes a little dot little uh, insert for you to put your, let's see, you can make a little hole for a tag, and then this one is really pretty. Let me show you what it looks like. But I'm just shoving it all the way in on both sides, as far as it'll go. And punching. Isn't that cute? I hear all of y'all saying, ooh, ah. Okay, so, oh, I need that back so that I can do the corners on here. Oops, and if it does come out like that, you didn't have it quite right in there. So just do it again. And I'm gonna do all four corners. Hello, come on. There we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put my donkey down. The way I did it was so that this board on the fence covers up the line that you have there. 
And then I wanted the donkey to fit right down behind the fence. So I'm gonna put him close to, to the line and, oops, that's the one I keep grabbing. And also I go back and forth. One time I'll pull to the left and one time to the right and back and forth so that your uh, snail adhesive, which is not called snail adhesive anymore, will work. Okay, you've got that. And then I know that my little fence is gonna go on top. And what I'm gonna do is, see how these are like sexagons? They've got little points. If you can do it so that the points are going toward the the edge and the um, the boards, then you're not as likely to see it. Let's see. I'm gonna put about six on here just to make sure it's down good. Let's see. I did five. Let's see. Okay, that one needs to be scooched over just a little bit. And you can always clip these if you need to. But that's pretty good. This one's showing a little tad, so I'm moving him over. All right, before I do this, I want to put on our Early Espresso. This is a faux suede bolt of ribbon uh, cut off. Let's see. I think 12 in 10 inches so that I could tie a little bow. So I'm going to thread it through the second to last couple of things. And I always have to turn mine upside down so the legs go the right way. I make it just a little longer on one side because that's going to be the side that wraps around. Tie my bow. And you know, there is such thing as a bow maker out there. I haven't ever seen one in person. I've seen them online. But if you're really challenged at making bows, you might want to take a look at that and see if that helps. Okay. I'm gonna clip my little bow there and take off all the backs on the little minis. These little mini dimensionals really come in handy when you have a small surface. Okay, and remember I said I want that little board to go right there. Okay. Now, we still need some balloons. We have a balloon bouquet. And I know I'm using a lot of products today, but I just kind of wanted you to see what all was out there that you could choose from. And there are two different size balloons. On one, I used a large one and two of the smaller, and on this one I just used all small. And to do it, come in either on either side if you're only cutting out one balloon. Now, it doesn't matter because there's a scrap on this side. Two balloons. Oops, now see how I would have cut out two or half of one and ruined that? Okay, going in there. Now, so we're through with this. And I tied the balloons down with this awesome linen thread. It doesn't come like this. I put it on a little ribbon bolt. It comes, I think, either on a, one of those little round dowel looking things or um, 
with um, a little piece of cardboard and it's wrapped around. It's just easier for me to fool with, so I transfer it. Now, you're gonna take your thread, these are six inch pieces, and I'm gonna put my little balloon in through and pull it tight and then make a knot and trim that off. And my other string that was just here, here it is. I thought it ran away from me. Okay, doing it again, just like you're gonna tie a knot, pull it so it's small and stick the end of the balloon in. Now, oops, that one came undone. If you don't wanna do that, you can always use a glue dot to hold it. We're gonna do this end. Let's try that again. Sometimes it works every time, sometimes it doesn't. I think the secret is you need to make the little knot small before you slip in the balloon. Okay. Clip that. Now, I'm going to put the um, Blackberry Bliss behind. So it's kind of in the background. And then you have your two other balloons. are gonna go on top. So you only needed two pieces of string instead of three. So take the backs off, put one there, and put one there. Now I'm gonna take the two strings and put it through the fence post and one came through, there's the other one. Okay, now I'm gonna pull them tight so that I can go in, lift this up, tuck it under, this doesn't wanna to cooperate today, does it? Come on. Okay, there it is. So that you can pull those tight. And once you got it tight, then you can go back in and just tie a knot. That'll hold it. I didn't even go back underneath. Now, I'm just going to trim that off. Is that the cutest thing? And I want y'all to know I did not even case this card. This is my own design. So I was rather proud of it, even though Rod thought I was calling him a donkey's ass or something. But anyway, now we need to do the inside. So I've cut a piece that is four by five and a quarter that's gonna go right there. And I'm going to put this little guy, the one that's kicking up his heels, right there in the corner. And then there's some, like, little stars. I guess it kind of looks like he's kicking up some dirt. So there's the inside of my card. Nice and quick. That'll go right on the inside. Okay, and there you have the birthday card. Let me close this up before I get ink on my card. Now, the last thing I'm gonna show you is <clears throat> how to do the envelope. And we're, we're gonna use, of course I have to reopen it, but that's okay. We're gonna use this other little guy that's sitting there with just that cute, sweet little smile. And 
I'm going to put him on a block. That's not quite big enough. We'll put him on that one. Now, what I'm going to do, um, I'm not going to stamp. The, it's mainly his little face that I want to show. And I'm also going to color him. I did not show you on the, um, the other donkey that was Whisper White, but the blends will bleed through. So if I go to do blends here, it's going to go through to the other side of my envelope. So the way to avoid this is to take just a scrap piece of paper, go down in the corner or wherever your image is, and now if it bleeds through, it's going to bleed through on the, on the scrap instead of on your paper or your envelope. And I'm just going to quickly color him in. And give him a couple little dark splotches just around him. And I might even put a little, a few little stars up here. Okay. Now, let's see what it looks like on the other side. Okay. It did not bleed through, or it may have just a little bit right there. But there you have it. And isn't that a precious envelope for a precious card? I hope y'all like this as much as I do. The one last little thing I'm going to do is, I don't know, sometimes you see just a little white glimmer. I'm using my chalk marker just to make the um, balloons look, I guess, 3D. So... That's all I have for you today. I hope you're having a wonderful week. I'm going to turn myself back up. I've enjoyed it. Hope you have too. Remember, if you are needing ins detailed instructions, go to Stampin' at the Bird Nest under Gallery. Click on gallery and you can uh, have all the whole list of supplies and all the instructions. I'm also downloading these to YouTube. I hope that you will subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss anything. And I'll have the supplies there with the link on how to get to um, the rest of the instructions. So, y'all have a great week. Once again, I forgot to put out my uh, February code. It is also on my blog site, my website, stampinatthebirdnest.com. So if you place an order, please use the uh, website, I mean the host code there. And I will be back with more fun and I hope some more cute cards you're gonna love. So take care and remember, this is a hint from being locked up for almost a year now. My, one of my biggest decisions are which pair of leggings am I gonna wear. So I was really excited the other day when I wore jeans and I could zip them up without laying on the bed. So that's my tip. Be sure to try your clothes on every now and then. Make sure that this COVID-19 is not creeping up on you or your waistline, okay? Love y'all. Have a great week. Mwah. See you next week. Bye.